Hey y'all, Emily here from fairairmusic.com. Today, I'm gonna show you how to mix drums in five minutes. Now, the way you do that is by using a couple of really special techniques that will give you great results every time. This process can literally be done in minutes with the right tools and practice. This process can be used on real live drums or any sort of drum samples loops that you've built out for any style or genre. Now, the way I like to mix drums is with parallel compression. And not just any parallel compression, this is a pre-calibrated, predetermined setting that I have on my mixing template. I learned this technique from Vance Pal and have adapted it a bit to work in the box and it has yet to let me down. Let me show you how you can mix drums in minutes with this template and technique. So here are our drums. I've just got a little bit of balance going on. None of the plugins are engaged at this time. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to add in my parallel compression. Now my parallels are down here in orange and I'm just going to be focusing on these two right here, the drum bus and the drum crush. So what I have already set on my template is the 33609 with these settings and the fat so. So the first thing that I will do is add my sins in pre-fader on my drums. All of the drums are going to be going to the 33609 and then all of the shells, the kick, snare, and toms will be going to the drum crush along with the 33609. And so let's just see what that sounds like. So we lose a lot of energy when we take out the parallels. So let's add those back in. Nice, that's really tightening things up. And this is pre-calibrated to bring back in one dB of overall gain to our mix. So the next thing that I wanna do actually is not necessarily top-down mixing because I wanna start with the overheads in the room first. And the first thing that I'll do is just stick a very basic EQ on the overheads. So this is a setting that I already have in this plugin on my template ready to go. So I'm just going to turn that on and see what we've got going on. There's uh, quite a bit of high pass filtering going on all the way up to 146. I'm pulling out that 400 to 500 range that just kind of get, just has a little bit too much buildup with everything going on. There's a lot of, a lot of things that can build up as far as your kick and your snare and everything like that that go on in that area. So I pulled that out and I've got a, a shelf at a 7K here, just a little bit. And then I'm also just rolling off the very top end of that because I just feel like it kind of, you know, rounds everything off and doesn't get too washy up there. Next thing is almost the same thing on the rooms and that's just rolling off a lot of that just kind of low rumble. I feel like it just kind of interferes with the kick a little bit. So let's see what those sound like when we bring them in. Tightens everything up. So now we're tightening things. We are getting things a little bit more focused in on. So then now I'm going to kind of work on some individual elements. And the first plugin that I like to use is the Neve 1073. Uh, I like to have just um, not as many options when I'm working with individual instruments. I just feel like it works the best. And we, you know, we're trying to go fast, but we're not trying to speed through this. But we're, we don't want to dwell on a lot of should I use this plugin? Should I use that plugin? I know that this plugin sounds great and it's an EQ and that's what I need. So I'm just going to click on 60 here because I know I'll probably want that on my kick and see how it sounds. And I'm actually just going to bring the same settings over to this other kick that we have. This is a kick that comes in just for the chorus.
I think that I think that sounds pretty good so far. Next, moving on to the snare. This is going to be our snare top. So I'm just going to toggle between 220 here and 110, see what kind of sounds better. Yeah, really fill that out. And next, we're going to basically just get a little bit of air on the snare bottom. I'm not that big of a fan of snare bottom, but we'll see. I think it's adding a, just a little bit more sound for us here, filling things out. So we'll see. All right, I think it sounds pretty good right there. All right, so we also have this snare 808. Not really sure why that's in there. I don't know if it's adding that much. So anytime I've got some of those elements that are just kind of adding texture, I'm just going to probably just add a little bit of a high pass filter on that just so it's not, you know, adding any more uh, energy where we don't want it. It can kind of get mu mucky and, you know, I'm just we're just trying to open up some space on the frequency spectrum here so that everything can come through and sound nice together. Okay, I think that's a good compromise on where that is. Next, we don't really have a lot of toms going on. So most of that is just going to be mic bleed, but I like to keep that in even though it's not being played because we're, it's still a mic that's picking up on the drum kit. And so I'll probably just add a high pass filter in here and make sure that we're not masking anything. All right, so that sounds really nice. Now, what I like to do next is do a little processing on the overall drum group. So first thing I like to do is just see if we can shape up the overall drum sound just a little bit better. And by adding this high pass filter, we're just tightening up the low end. See how it kind of spreads out a little bit there? We add this in. Really tightens that kick up. Now, as you probably know, there's an area around, you know, 400 to 500 that gets just a little bit, a little too much built up. Looks like we're controlling it pretty well already on the individual tracks, but let's try and see what this can do for us.
little bit of topping, a little bit of shimmer. So then the final thing that I like to do is make sure that I've got my instrument chamber on all of my groups here. They're all set ready to go from my template. And what that does is it just really helps us hear everything. It, it, it kind of makes it sound a little bit glued already. So here's what it sounds like with, and then I'll take it out. So much better. So let's see if we need the Opticom. Sometimes I don't use it. It just gives it a little bit. Um, this gives it a little bit more saturation on there. It, it's compress. It's compressing it, and just kind of when you add those textures in there, sometimes the the things can poke out just a little bit better, and you can hear them a little bit more clearly. So that kind of helps the snare poke out a little bit better. And that's just going to be blended in to taste and to, you know, how the style of the genre, the music is. Uh, but that can be a lot of fun and help your drums, you know, really fill out in a mix. Now, the last thing that I want to look at here is the uh, drum reverb. Now, sometimes I will add a little bit of that on the overall uh, drum group. Just depends. But usually, I'll just stick that on the snare top because I feel like that's kind of, you know, if that's the style I'm going for and I need a little bit more room, more ambience on the snare, then I've got that ready to go. So we've got that turned up a little bit, and then I'm just using the actual uh drum verb as the return on that. So let's see what that sounds like with and without. So that also helps everything come together, really gl glues the whole kit nicely, and it's going to sound really good because what we're doing is we're building the foundation of our mix with our drum and our drum kit. And that literally took minutes to do. Uh, just to recap, we, you know, kind of just got like a, a basic balance here. And while that's already merged in with the parallels down here, the drum bus and the drum crush, and that is just kind of gluing things together. It's kind of gluing the kit together. It's filling in the holes, filling in the gaps. So the things, you know, don't just sound so individual. We, we want the drum to sound as a kit. And we want it to sound if it's as it was in the room with the rest of the instruments. Then we're just doing some individual EQing. You know, uh, once everything comes, once, you know, we unmute these and, and hear it with the mix, I may go back and add some compression on those individual elements. Maybe not. I think it sounds pretty good where it is right now, but you never know. That's why they're already set there, ready to go. And then just listen and use those techniques. Use the parallel compression. Use the instrument chamber. Use the uh, EQ on the, the individual elements, but don't overthink it. You know, that's why I love plugins like this because it's limiting my options. But I know that this plugin sounds really good on drums and on, on kicks and snare. So what we're doing is we're applying our techniques, we're not overthinking it, and we're literally mixing an entire drum kit in minutes. So this really fills out the drum, it builds a mix foundation, allows us to then start placing all of the other instruments properly, and then by adding some room with the eye chamber bus, and if we need it to have a drum reverb, also the Opticom, you know, we're just adding these little elements that are already ready to go that we know will sound great every time. So okay, there you go. This is the way that I mix drums and it literally only takes minutes. It's about technique and tools and knowing how to use the two together. Now before you go, I want to tell you how you can download this exact 
template, just click on the link in the description and you will find all of my templates for your doll of choice. Or you can go to fairairmusic.com and find them that way. Also, check out some of the free downloads that I have there as well. This exact template is available for Logic Pro, Pro Tools, Luna, and Studio One. So get yours, download it today, and start getting great sounding mixes in half the time. Work smarter with these amazing techniques. All right, thanks so much for watching, y'all. We'll talk soon.